Hello, everyone. Sorry for the delay. A little problem with Hangouts because they updated today, so something's going on. Anyway, let's get started. Uh, first of all, a little bit about me before we begin our part two of our pronunciation class from Monday. I'm John Eric, your Verbling teacher. For this hour, I'm an American teacher from New York, hanging out in Lisbon, Portugal, to bring you this class. By the way, three quick rules to help you participate. Don't forget to turn off, tune in, and open up. That means please turn off your microphone when you're not speaking, like right now, so that we can keep the classroom nice and quiet. Rule number two is tune in to the new words that you're learning. Use them as actively as you can. In this case, we're going to learn not just words. We're going to learn a few ideas to help you with pronunciation. Use these things as actively as you can so that I can correct you and give you feedback. And finally, open up to your classmates. Relax and have fun. We're all here to learn, and this is a safe and respectful place to practice your English. And that is all you need to know about me. Let me say a quick hello to all of you before we get started. So welcome back, Mr. Ode, Senior Daniel, Ms. Grace, nice to see you, and Adrian, uh, let's see if I know you. Adrian, yes, I do. I think I've seen you before, Adrian. Remind me. We've, yes, we've, uh, it's been a while, time, though, right? Once, once yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Where are you from, Adrian? Uh, from Uruguay. From Uruguay. Okay. Very good. Are you in Uruguay now? Yeah, yeah I live in, in Uruguay. What time I'm is late. it? It's early. Uh, nine o'clock. Morning. Wow. Yeah. It's only nine o'clock in the morning in Uruguay? Yeah. Really? It's only yeah. two hours difference from here? How is that possible? Uh, yes, it's in, it's, uh, Uruguay is in the same line of New York, maybe. I know, but I'm not in New York. I'm in Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> Portugal. Uh, uh, because uh, uh, now uh, it's time uh, summer, of summer. Ah. But it's only two hours difference from here, and it's across the Atlantic Ocean. How is that possible? 9 a.m.? Yeah. Nueve. Nueve. Wow. <laughs> it should Nueve. be five hours. It should be five hours difference. Wow, I'm confused. But anyway, it's interesting to know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you're in a special part of Uruguay. That's it. Or maybe it's not 11 o'clock, my time. I'm confused. Uh, anyway, nice to have you here, Adrian. Uh, let's say hello to a new face. Uh, I don't know how to say your name. Is it Yagis or Yagis? How do I say your name? Um, Yagis. Yagis. And where are you from, Yagis? I'm from Turkey. From Turkey. Okay. Nice to have you. Uh, who else is here? Oh, Antonio. Which Antonio? Hello, Antonio. Hello. I recognize, I recognize your picture and I recognize your <laughs> voice. Yes. Nice to have you back. By the way, is that you in the picture? Yes, in the middle. <laughs> you're you're in the middle. You're not one of the little girls. Oh, okay. My two my two daughters. Your two daughters. And where are you? Is this uh, in the Mediterranean? Yes, in the natural park of uh, Cabo de Gata, here ah. in Maria. You, you can always the tell south. the Mediterranean. Look at that, nice and blue, and yes. it looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> Not like the Atlantic, cold and dark. That's what I have over here. All right, everyone. Um, this is part two of a class we did earlier, but we're going to review what we did, so even if you weren't there, you'll catch up really quickly. Let me share my screen with you, and we'll get started. Give me just a second here to get the screen on. There we go. That's it. OK, if you want to open that document, you'll see that graphic and you know you're in the right place. Let's scroll down. We're on class three, working on the intonation and stress of exclamations. So we're going to continue with class three because we didn't really get to the exercises. We just focused kind of on the reviewing part. We didn't really go forward too much, okay? So let's go down to class three, which is on page six. We're going to skip 
the strong and weak prepositions. We're not going to do the exercises, but we are going to do a quick recap of those rules. So for those of you who are in the class Monday, you should remember how to complete these sentences about when you pronounce a, pronounce a preposition in the strong way or in the weak way. So does anyone remember from Monday how we would complete those sentences for the rules? The yeah, rules, in right. fact, are pretty easy. <clears throat> They're not so hard. They make sense when you think about it. Go ahead, Daniel. The first one, when a preposition comes at the end of a question, the pronunciation is hard. Is, we're going to say strong. Strong, sorry. Absolutely. Therefore, when a preposition comes in the middle of a sentence, the pronunciation is usually weak in fast speech. Strong and weak. Okay. Daniel, can you think of an example of a preposition coming at the end of a question? What are you looking for? What are you looking for? Okay, so the for is pronounced in a very clear way. We can hear the whole word. Uh, Mr. Odie, because you gave the example in the last class, what would be an example of for coming in the middle of the sentence? You did it before, so you probably remember. Um, this book, this book for writing. Huh? <laughs> I can't hear you. This book for writing. If you're missing the verb, this book is. The book is for writing. This book is for writing. Like maybe you bought a journal, a moleskin or something. Is this book for reading? No, it's for writing. Okay. And notice the difference in pronunciation. Daniel said something like, who is this for? And you hear clearly, for. But Odie said, it's for writing, for. Almost like F-E-R instead of F-O-R. It's for. What really is happening is that you don't say the vowel. You're saying the F and the R without the O. It's for. It's for writing. It's for writing. So that is just a quick recap of actually what we did in class two. Let's move on to class three and work on exclamations. Okay? Some of this we did, but we're going to do it as a review. So here, we're going to look at exclamations, and by exclamations, we mean two things. Either you're shouting or you're using the question form, like who, when, what, where, how, but you're not asking a question. So if I say, what a beautiful day, I'm not saying what is a beautiful day and asking you to define a beautiful day. I'm giving a grammatical exclamation. So starting a sentence that is not a question with who, what, when, where, and how is one way to give an exclamation. So what we're going to do is build up our vocabulary for exclamations first using some, uh, using some countable and uncountable nouns and other things and then we're going to put it into practice with looking at intonation. Okay, so give me just a second here because I need to open something on my computer. Oh, here it is. While I open that, Is this open? Yeah, it is. Okay, good. All right. You can't see it, but I have to open this PDF on my computer or I'll get confused. All right. So let's get started then. Over here, in the last class, we had a hideous hat stand. What is that woman doing in the picture? Let's say a quick hello to Ruben. Ruben, can you see the picture on the screen? Hello, Ruben. You got to turn your microphone on at the top of your screen, and then you can say hello to the class. Uh, I don't hear you, Ruben. So, Ruben, when you get your microphone on, say hello to everyone, okay? Or if you're having trouble, Ruben, just write in the chat window so I can help you out, okay? Um, Grace. Yes. See that? 
What what's the woman doing in the picture? Oh, what do you think she's doing? Heidi's hard to story. This see, it's Heidi's hard to show. Mm -hmm. oh. Not hideous, but hideous. Hideous. Oh, terrible hat. <laughs> terrible hat, exactly. <laughs> yes, hideous hat. Okay. And what's the woman doing? Uh, it's, it's, uh, this means finger is, is. What's that word with your finger? Finger is, look at, look, look for finger is. We say pointing, like Daniel uh, wrote pointing, in the window. Yes, pointing yeah. finger is hot. Uh, I think it's. Slow, slow, sword, sword, gum, hot, sword, <laughs> hot. <laughs> right. We'll call it the sword hat. The yeah. sword hat. Sword hat. Oh. <laughs> we don't say the W. It's not sword, but sword, sword, sword. 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 There sword. you go. So, in the last class, we matched up some key words that we're going to use to describe. A picture and just uh, we'll get to that in a second but let's go back um, let's go back for a minute and just review this and for some of you this will be new so you've got a definition some hideous hats what you've got to do is find the opposite word okay for some of you you've done this before but we're going to use your opposites in the next activity so I want to review it really quickly okay so let's give it a try. Um, let's go. Let's start off with Mr. Antonio. Some hideous hats. What I want you to do is tell me. Uh, I'll tell you in a second here. What's the opposite of hideous? Beautiful. Uh, where is beautiful? You gotta look at the words on the right side. We've got delicious, fresh, shabby, monotonous, attractive. 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 Good. Say the whole thing. Some hideous hats becomes some. Uh, some hideous hats becomes attractive. Becomes some attractive hats. Okay, that's it. Uh, give me a second here, because I gotta open. I'm opening my PDF, and I'm just trying to find the page on my computer because my PDF looks a little different than the notes. Give me one second here. Uh, 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 where are we? Uh, got it. Okay, here it is. Okay. So that was Antonio. Adrian, a disgusting flavor. We're not talking about hats anymore. A disgusting flavor becomes... What's the opposite? Um. Look at the words on the right side. Which is the opposite of disgusting? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, um, attractive. I, I don't know. Yeah, we used attractive. Ah, delicious. 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 Yeah, yeah. Say the whole thing. Ah. Uh, the, the delicious. I think it, it, it is delicious. It's correct. Uh, it's correct. Yeah. Say the whole yeah. thing for us. A uh, disgusting flavor becomes a. Uh, 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 delish. De delicious flavor. Uh, flavor. Yeah. Say that again. A delicious flavor. A delicious flavor. Delicious. Not delicious, but delicious. Delicious. Flavor. That's it. Good. Remember, it's not an E, it's an I. Not okay. an E, but an I. By the way, in these notes, you have the International Phonetic Alphabet. So if you go down here to our vowels, we've got two charts, our vowel chart, and on page 26, our consonant chart. But the vowel chart gives you lots of clues about what the sound is. Delicious, I, I, is the short vowel of the letter I, like pink pig, delicious. Delicious. Can okay. you picture uh, a delicious pink pig putting it on your plate and eating it? Yum. Can you picture that in your mind, Antonio? 
Oh, uh, Adrian, sorry. Can you visualize a delicious pink pig? Uh, Get that picture in your mind. Picture it. Can you see it in your mind? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, if you can imagine it, it'll yeah. help you remember the sound because the, you can picture the, the color pink, yeah. you can picture a pig, okay, and you can yeah. remember that the it's pig is the I sound. It's a, it is a good rule to it, remember. It works. Now, be very careful because people who speak Spanish, Italian, French, and these Latin languages, yeah. it's difficult for for Spanish speakers to hear the difference between e and i. But remember, e is green and i is pink. Just like the word sound. So when you encounter okay. a new word, I want you to visualize that word in that color. No matter what the word is, just create a mental image and it will really help you start to you will start to hear the difference because the visuals will remind you that there's two different yeah. sounds you have to remember. Okay? Right. And you can, right. yeah. Okay. So for here, you have to visualize something delicious. I don't eat meat, so I'm not going to visualize a pig. But you can you can visualize another i sound. Like a fig. Figu. Fig. There you go. A pink fig. Yeah. If you're a vegetarian. <laughs> anyway. That's my idea. <laughs> Let's go back. We're on class three and our hideous hat stand. Okay. Uh, let's go to Mr. Uh, Mr. Mulham for a sensible woman. The opposite of sensible would be a uh, what? Yeah. Oops. Couldn't hear you. Uh, is it me? My turn? Yeah. Okay, let's let Antonio uh, solve it because I took my turn. Uh, I took his turn. You did? Yeah, actually, oh. I didn't know. Okay, yeah. sorry, Antonio. Sorry. So, C, the opposite of sensible in this list would be. Um, it's my turn. So. Yes, please. Yes, as uh, a foolish woman. A foolish woman. So, opposite of sensible would be foolish. Foolish. Okay, foolish. good. We're going to use these words in an activity in just a second. Uh, I don't know. I lost my place. I think, Odie, you're next. A stale cake. What's the opposite? A stale cake will be... Fresh. Excellent. A fresh cake. Okay, very good. Daniel. A gorge, a smart jacket, a smart jacket. <clears throat> Become a ghastly jacket. Try again. There's a better one. Westly. There's a better one. Shabby. 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 <clears throat> Which course. animal in our vowel chart is shabby? What animal? A uh, rat. In our vowel chart, we don't have a rat. We have a cat. <laughs> we have a black cat. <laughs> if you can picture in your mind mm -hmm. a shabby black cat, it hasn't been washed, it's got fleas, pulgas, then <laughs> you've got your shabby black cat. That will help you remember that it's shabby. Shabby. Okay? That's mm -hmm. it. <clears throat> okay. A gorgeous view. Grace, why don't you take this one? A gorgeous, gorgeous view. Is, um Gorgeous food opposite is uh -huh. uh, gorgeous is beautiful and ugly, ugly view. Good. Which one of those words on the right basically means ugly? Yes. Which one means ugly? Um, it is hideous, hot is ugly shop. Right. That's true. But look at the words on the right. Delicious, fresh, shabby, monotonous, ghastly, foolish, depressing, attractive. Ah. Uh, uh, foolish? Foolish? No. Uh, no. No, 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 no. We foolish. used foolish already. 
Mm. I'll give you a hint. Ah, uh, shabby, shabby. No, because shabby is more for like clothing. Clothing, clothing, clothing can be shabby because it's oh. got holes mm. in it or something like that. Mm. So, monotonous, monotonous. Monotonous is for your voice. Yes. When, when you speak like a robot, you are monotonous. Mm. Yes. Attractive is same thing. Is depressed is feeling. Right. Depressed. Let's, let's, let's ask the group. Group, which word means the same as ugly in that list? Ghastly. 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 G h a s t l y. Ghastly is dressed. Dressed. Is ugly. Ugly. Oh. Yeah. Ghastly. It's oh. a way to say ugly. It looks, it looks terrible. It looks ghastly. Um. So gorgeous view becomes what? Very beautiful. No, no, the opposite. Ah, uh, ghastly. Ghastly, exactly. Ghastly. ghastly. Excellent. Yes. What about the view from your window, Grace? Is it a gorgeous view or is it a ghastly view? Gorgeous view. <laughs> of course. You're <laughs> so in Korea. Cute. Beautiful country. Of course. Yes. Very good. Let's see if Mr. Ruben has his microphone working. Ruben, are you out there? Ruben? She said he couldn't uh, told. Oh, really? Oh, uh, OK. I didn't see that. that. Works. Ah, I didn't see that. Okay. Sorry, Just Ruben. 5 p.m. Ruben, you can still answer by writing in the chat window, though. Okay. So if you want, you can participate. Uh, I will try to keep my eye on the chat window. All right. And what about a cheerful atmosphere? A cheerful atmosphere. Who's who? We're back to Mr. Adrian. A cheerful atmosphere. The opposite would be. Uh, I don't remember the meaning of the cheerful. <laughs> cheerful. Is it something good or bad? What do you think? Does mm. it sound like something that sounds good, positive, or something that sounds bad, negative? Sound good, but you know. I, I agree. It does. <laughs> okay. And so, then, which then one of those words is the opposite of good? Atmosphere is how we feel. It's not the atmosphere we breathe, it's how we feel. The feeling in the room is the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So, if it's a cheerful atmosphere, it means we feel happy. What's the opposite of feeling happy? Okay. Depressing. Exactly. Depressing what? De de depressing atmosphere. Excellent. A depressing <laughs> atmosphere. Yeah. Very good. And Antonio, the last one, a varied lifestyle. What's the opposite? Uh, monotonous uh, lifestyle. Very good. The opposite of varied can be monotonous. Even though monotonous is for the way we speak, we can use it to describe something out there in reality, too. So it's for your voice, but you can use it to describe other things. And we're going to describe... Oh, look at this. I had the answers there, and I forgot. I'm going to get rid of them. We don't care. We did it by speaking. Um, the pronunciation was pretty good, but what we're going to do is use these words on page 9. You're at the beach. You see this guy. What do you think about this guy? You like him? Where do you think he's from? <laughs> look at the book he's reading. <clears throat> From Spain? No. No. Uh, no basically. Learning Spanish. <laughs> right. Where do you think he's from? Britain. Yeah. Britain, yeah. Or the USA, because basic Spanish. Basic Spanish. In English. Basic Spanish. Terrible clothes. So you see this guy at the beach. What would you say about him? if he couldn't hear you. <laughs> you would say, hey, look at that guy. He's what, Grace? What would you say about him? He's disgusting. Disgusting. <laughs> disgusting is <he's> close. <laughs> ah. 
<laughs> His clothes are disgusting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. His clothes are disgusting. Yeah, they're kind of disgusting. Well, they're not dirty, so I don't know if they're disgusting because he's not yeah. filthy. Yes. I would tell him, hi there, beauty. Hi there, beautiful, because it's like uh, an ambiguous sentence, because there's him and there's a girl on his shirt. Oh, I got it. <laughs> I guess you have to be clear which one you're talking to, him or the girl on the shirt. Uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to use some countable and uncountable nouns, along with those adjectives we just learned, to describe the picture. I think I have this written down here, yeah. So you're going to fill in the chart with the countable nouns with the same meaning as the uncountable nouns. And the uncountable nouns are listed for you. Now, these are not all for the picture. We'll get back to the picture in a second. But just to show you what I mean, advice. Advice is uncountable because you cannot say one advice but you can say some advice. What I want you to do is try to think of a word that is countable and we'll fill it in on the countable column. In other words, when you speak in general, you say uncountable things. Let me give you some advice. But if you're going to talk about particular advice, I cannot say, let me give you one advice. But I can say what? Recommendation. OK, excellent. So let's fill in some of these suggestions here. A, recommendation. I can give you a recommendation. What else can I give you? Someone else. Danielson's recommendation? Succession. Su su um, su yeah. Say it right. Suggestion. Suggestion. Okay. That's it. Suggestion. Not su, but su. Suggestion. Suggestion. Good. Suggestion. Okay. Good. That's it. Okay, the next one is bread. Bread is uncountable. Give me some bread. But specifically, what would I say? Nobody? Boast. A bread. Not a bread. Impossible. Not possible. Daniel, what did you say? A boast. B O A S T. Boast? Uh, <clears throat> maybe I didn't, I didn't know the meaning of bread in this case. Bread is? Bread is uh, food. Yeah. Pound? Penny. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Maybe a croissant? <laughs> Can we say leaf of, of bread? We can't. Baguette. <laughs> we can't, because Baguette. it's not a leaf. Leaves, leaves grow on trees. We can say a loaf of bread. Uh. Not a leaf, but a loaf. There you go. What else can we say? One more. A loaf is the whole thing. What else can we say? A loaf is the whole thing. What's the part? When you slice it up, you have yeah, a slice, slice. of course. And what else? Mm. What do you say bread in, in Spanish, a by a the way? A piece of bread, right. What was it? Baguette. Baguette. That's how you say bread in Spanish, baguette? Uh, a kind of bread. Barro de pan. Japan. Pan, is that it? P A N pan? R. E A R. Write it for me in the chat window. How is that possible? Wait, are we understanding each other? Look. You say bar, really? Bar de pan? But why are you saying Oh, because you're trying to translate loaf, is that it? Look, in Portuguese, you've got pão, and you've got, uh, I don't even know how to spell it, pão fatia, which is bread and slice. 
And and bread in Spanish is pan. Is that right? Yes, it's a. Yes. What's barra the pan is the the saying of uh, loaf of bread. Ah, barra de pan is loaf. Got it. Okay. And what's a slice? Do you say fatia? No, is that Portuguese? Um, molde, on the molde. When you sandwich, cut, kind of uh, sandwich. Rebanada. Yes, yes rebanada. Ogaza, no? <laughs> what do you call it when you cut it into pieces? Antonio, what do you call it when you cut the pan into pieces? <laughs> Rebanadas. Granada? Rebanadas. 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 I hope I'm saying it right. Ah, oh, there we go. Rebanada. Okay, got it. Slice. Rebanada. Got it. I just learned two words in Spanish. Now I can speak Spanish. Almost. <laughs> the next word is clothes. I cannot say a uh, clothes. I can only say some clothes. So if I want to be specific here, I have to talk about what? Let's take a look quickly at the guy. His clothes are what Grace said. What's another word for clothes but a countable word? What comes to mind? Dress? Good idea. It's a good idea. For dress, we'd have to say the way he's dressed. So. We're not dress, because dress is what a woman tr wears, like you know the 1950s woman dress. Women today don't have to wear dresses. But if I could say the way, whoops, the way he is dressed, I can say that. I got another word that begins with out. What's the rest of this out. Outdoor? No. <laughs> I'm talking about clothes. Of, of outfit. Yes, that's it. Outfit. I can say one outfit, but I cannot say one clothes. Okay? So, food is uncountable. But lunch, breakfast, and dinner are specific what? Meal. Meal. Meals. Meals. Okay, Meals. Good. Luggage is uncountable. But the man in the picture is holding what? Bag. Bag. Nope. Not bag. Baggage. 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 Not baggage. <laughs> Suitcase. Try again. Suitcase is correct. Suitcase. Okay. So luggage is uncountable. Case or suitcase is countable. Music is uncountable. Song. Song is countable. What else besides song? I'm whistling a... a tune. Melody. Tune, melody, yeah. I'm going to say tune because it's more general. But yeah, melody works as well. Weather is uncountable. But how do I talk about the weather? This British tourist, I'm going to assume he's British, I don't know, decided to go to Maribella, Maribella <laughs> because it's nice weather. He's in La Playa Hotel, look at that. So what's another way to say, oh, I went on holiday to Maribella because the weather is good. It has a better what? <laughs> what? Say again? Season. Uh, not season. Climate. 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 Excellent. Climate is right. As I do this, don't forget what you learned earlier, which is climate is white lion in our system. You have to picture a white lion at the beach in Marabella. Can you picture that? The beach is white, <coughs> the lion is white, 
And if you do that, you'll remember it's climate. Not climate, but climate. So it's not a green sheep, it's a white lion on the beach. Climate, good weather. Climate. Lion <laughs> salon. Climate. On the, on the beach. Let me go back. I lost my place. Where was I? Oh, <laughs> lost Damn. my place. I think it's done. Bitch done. Uh -uh. 10? Okay. Scrolling up. There we go. Page 10. Okay. Um, last one. Work is uncountable. What is countable? Job. 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 That one's easy. Now, I want you to focus on what our real goal is, exclamation and intonation. So look at how the intonation changes when I go from uncountable to countable, okay? We're talking about that guy in the picture, and we say, oh my god, what hideous clothes. Look at, look at the diagram at the bottom of the page. What hideous clothes hideous clothes you've got two peaks one peak is on hid one peak is on clothes what hideous clothes hideous clothes so what I want to hear is the intonation when we change it from countable from uncountable to countable you'll notice that the the peaks, the stress, they don't change. They don't really change. It's still we're still going to stress the key words. The first one I did for you. What hideous clothes becomes what a hideous outfit. Okay. What hideous clothes, Odie? Let me hear you say the. On the countable version. I say, what hideous clothes? And you say, what a, what a hideous outfit. Go ahead, Odie. What a hideous outfit. What a hideous outfit. What a hideous, a hideous outfit. Excellent. Grace, let me hear you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me hear you. Go ahead. What a hideous outfit. Good. Careful. Not outfit. Outfit. Uh, Out. Fit. Not feet. Fit. 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 Good. Fit. Because feet is like green sheep. Fit outfit. is like pink pig. Yes. Outfit. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Mulham. What shabby luggage? I want you to say the countable version of that. Okay. What? Uh, one second. What shabby's? What a shabby suitcase. Excellent. What a shabby suitcase. What a shabby suitcase. I can go up or I can go down. But the stress is, which are which are the stressed syllables in that sentence? Well, shabby, 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 and the suitcase, suit, suit, shabby and suit. Yeah, what a shabby suitcase. Okay, the emphasis the emphasis on shabby. Is it on shabby? The <clears throat> the stress, not emphasis, but the stress, is shab. And the and the second stress, the lower stress, is on suit. What a shabby suitcase! Da 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 da. What a shabby suitcase! Now I can go up though. What a shabby suitcase! I can reverse it, but I can't change the stress on those words. So, Mohan, let's hear you do it the other way. Let's hear the the high stress on suit. What a shabby suitcase. What a shabby suitcase. There you go. Excellent. Sounds good. Um, Antonio, let me hear you. What a shabby suitcase. What a shabby suitcase. There you go. Excellent. 
Antonio, what gorgeous weather? I want to hear the countable version. Uh, what a gorgeous, uh, gorgeous climate. Climate. Excellent. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. It looks like gorgeous, but it's not. It's gorgeous. 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 Excellent. So one more time. What a gorgeous climate. Excellent. What a gorgeous climate. Okay. Adrian, what a gorgeous climate. Now my voice is going up. What a, what a gorgeous climate. What a gorgeous climate. Uh, what a gorgeous climate. Excellent. Good. I could hear your voice going up. So the high tone can be on gore or it can be on climate. Both are acceptable. There's really no difference. But you cannot change the position of the stress. It will always be gore and it will always be climb. Let's hear it as a declining. Instead of a rising, let's hear it declining. Odie, I want to hear it like this. What a gorgeous climate. Da -da 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 -da. What a gorgeous climate, Odie. What a gorgeous what a gorge, gorgeous climate. Excellent. Cl climate. 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 Not not meat, but mit. Climate. Climate. That's it. Very good. That's it. Daniel, what a gorgeous climate. What a gorgeous climate. Very good. Excellent. I could hear your voice going up this time. So, the lesson here is the stress doesn't change, but the intonation can change. And on the screen, I gave you one intonation, but you could reverse them and have the high intonation at the end. It also works. I don't have a diagram for it, but it also works. So let's practice this a little bit. Listen, oh, I should say listen to. Listen to the comments and respond with the right exclamation. And I gave you an example. You listen to delicious meal. You speak, what a delicious meal. You listen to, what a delicious meal. And it should say, there should be another one. I'm missing one. And you say, what's the uncountable version of meal? For food. Excellent. So. We have to give a second one over here. I should have another diagram, but it's missing. So you speak what? Give me the countable version. What? Delicious food. What? Delicious, delicious food. Excellent. What delicious food. All right. That's the idea. I want you to go around and the first person is going to give a prompt like delicious meal or ghastly clothes, any of the previous vocabulary we've learned. The next person is going to give the full version as in as a countable. The person after that is going to give the full version as uncountable. Okay? So it's going to be something like this. I'll put it on the board just to make it a little bit more clear. Person one gives the prompt. Prompt could be delicious meal. You could even just say an adjective, delicious. Person two is going to give the, let's do countable first. And then person three will give the uncountable version. Uncountable. And the example here would be what countable. What a uh, can't write and speak at the same time. Del delicious. It's hard to write the word delicious. What a delicious meal. The uncountable version we just did. What delicious food, get rid of the uh, and we're, whoops, and we're all set. Okay? I'll get you started. I'll give you the first prompt, and then you are going to take over from there as a class. Okay? So listen to the prompt. I have to think for a second. What's a good prompt? 
Um, hideous hat, Adrian. Hideous hat. Um. Your person too. You give the countable version. The uh, full I, I, version. Okay. Um, person two uncountable. No, person two countable. Your your ah. person two. Ah, countable. Okay. 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 So your prompt was. Uh, yeah, yeah. It is hat. Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, um, what? 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 Uh, he use. Hat. Yeah, what a hideous hat. If yeah. you want, you could say, if you like, you could say a specific kind of hat. Okay. If you like. Like, what a hideous beret. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't remember. The, uh, uh, of the baseball? Yeah, what? baseball. What's the word? This guy's not wearing a hat, unfortunately. But... Uh, but anyway, we can imagine. What do we call what, what? the baseball hat, everyone? Cap. Cap. C A P. Oh, oh cap. Then is what a uh, hideous cap. Excellent. What a hideous cap. Antonio, give us the give us the uncountable. This one's a little difficult. You got to use your imagination a bit to get the uncountable version, because hat is countable, cap is countable. What do we say if it's uncountable? I don't know. Uh, I know, you got to use your <laughs> imagination. S say something. What hideous outfit. Good, it works. Now the only thing is, is outfit countable or uncountable? Look in the chart. Oh, I'm sorry, it's countable. So, so what uh, hideous clothes? Clothes or clothes? Clothes. What clothes. hideous clothes. Excellent. What hideous clothes. It works. In fact, you can say hat as an uncountable. You could say what hideous. You could say headwear. It's a little weird. It sounds like you're at a department store, but it exists. Anyway, we don't say it very often. All right. That's the plan. So now we're going to do the same thing. Adrian, you're giving the prompt this time. Antonio, you're doing person two. Daniel, you're doing person three. Okay, and then we're just going to keep going around the room until everyone gets a chance. Go ahead, uh, Adrian. Yeah. No. What? Uh... So just the prompt. Adjective and noun. Oh, okay. Um, got shoes. Uh, and try to use the vocabulary that we learned, just to make your life easy. You don't have to invent anything new, okay? Just to make it yeah. easy, use previously used words from the class. Uh, shoes. View. Excellent. Gorgeous. View. Okay, Antonio. You're doing the countable. What a... What a gorgeous view. What a gorgeous view. If you can think of a synonym, change view to another word. Mm. Landscape. landscape. What a gorgeous landscape. Excellent. Daniel, uncountable. Uh, what a gorgeous... <laughs> you can always cheat. Go back to here. Do we have view? Uh, no, we really don't, do we? Mm, we don't. So that's not going to help you. Well, you got to say something, Daniel. Picture. No, it's not picture. Close. Um, Another word for picture. Picture okay. is a picture. Uh, painting. No, no, no. That's still accountable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> I know you don't know, but I want you to guess. <laughs> <laughs> What's another word for picture and painting 
but one that is not countable. Help, plus. It's the same in Spanish as it is in English. Class, help him out. What a gorgeous portrait. Eh, that's still countable. A portrait. Still countable. Imagine. Image. Image. Right. Some images. Uh oh. You know what? I thought that was good, but now I, it's you could say one image, two images. Uh oh. Doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So you've got to use something else. You could say, "What a beautiful. What. What. What gorgeous." Wall. What? Wall. 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 Yeah. He's looking it's out the window. <laughs> okay. Scene, good, or scenery, too. Scenery. Here's another one. Scenery. scenery. That works. What gorgeous scenery. What gorgeous scenery. So I'm not saying the answers are obvious, but if you think a little bit, you'll come up with it. What a gorgeous scene. What gorgeous scenery. Scenery is better. It really means the view. Okay. Antonio, give us the next prompt. The prompt is the adjective and the noun together. Stale, um, stale meat. Good. Stale meat. Stale meat. Excellent. Daniel, uh, you're giving us the countable version. What? What a stale meat. What a stale meat. Nope, that's uncountable. Give us countable. There's no uh. Take out the uh. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. <laughs> the uh <laughs> is okay, but meat is uncountable. Wow. You cannot say one meat, two meats. Mm -hmm. So give us the countable first. What a stale... Oh, okay. What a, <clears throat> what a stale... Uh... No, you no, got to say something very specific. No, no. Uh, what a stale um, a stick. Excellent. What a stale. Now, is is that word S T A K? Go to your vowel chart really quickly, and tell me which animal does it match with? A gray snake. Gray snake steak. Steak. Perfect. That's it. That's it. So this vowel chart thing, it actually works. It takes a little time, but it works. Okay, let's just review. So Antonio said, repeat, Antonio. S stale meat. Stale meat. Stale, stale meat. Careful, not s stale, but stale. Stale. Yeah, be careful with that e. Uh. Because I'm hearing uh before the s, not s stale, but stale. Stale. It's hard to get rid of the e, eh. <laughs> like in Spanish. In Spanish, is difficult. I know, but slow it down. If you do it really slow, it'll be there. Stale meat. Go stale meat. Exaggerate. Stale meat. Good. If you exaggerate it and go slow, it'll actually sound natural. The countable, Daniel. What a stale steak. Excellent. The uncountable, Mulham. 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 Okay, stale uh, food. Uh, okay, what a stale food. No, there's no ah. Uh, if it's, uh, if sorry. it's uncountable, uncountable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What stale food? What uh, stale food? What stale food? Okay, good. What's stale food? Good enough. There's many things you could say. Food is good enough. Okay. Daniel. Give, get, okay. Daniel, give us the next prompt before we run out of time. <clears throat> okay. Um, Quickly. Uh, <laughs> Adjective now. <laughs> Smart uh, jacket. Smart jacket is excellent. Wilhelm, give us the countable. What are what smart clothes? Give us the countable first. Uh, what smart? Like uncountable. Mm. No countable. What smart? 
What a smart jacket. What a smart jacket. Another word for jacket? What a smart... Clothes. No. Um, jacket. Another word for jacket. Coat. What a smart coat. Good. Excellent. Odie. Uncountable. Um, still with jacket? Smart. No. Jacket is countable. You need an uncountable. Uh, another problem or still with clothes? Attire. What, what a smart attire. Smart attire. Uh, Very good. That's a great word. Attire. One more time. Let me hear it, Odie. What a, what's, what a smart attire. What a uh, or just what? What smart attire. Perfect. What smart attire. Excellent. Uh, Moham, give us the next prompt. Because I want to get Grace in here. Or we're going to run out of time. One more prompt. Uh, sensi sensible uh, woman. Sensible woman. I don't know if we should use sensible because that sounds sexist if we say foolish woman. But sense. I'm going to say person. Sensible person. <laughs> Just because I don't want to sound sexist. Uh, attire, by the way, Antonio, is this. If that's the word you wanted, attire. Okay, so that was Mohan, sensible person. Odie, you're going to give us the countable. What a sensible woman. We're going to go with woman again. Okay, what a sensible woman. Now, Grace, you have to give us the uncountable. It can't be woman because we can count women. It has to be an uncountable version of that word or a similar word. Okay, Grace? <laughs> Give it a try. What sensible firefight? Is that a synonym for people? Uh, firefight. Oh, firefighter? Yes. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna give me a type of person. I understand. What sensible firefighters? You have to add an S, Grace. Yes. If you add an S, it's okay. If you make it plural. Plural. Okay. Yeah. Yes. If it's yes. plural, it works. What sensible firefighters? Yeah. Yes. But Maybe. but sensible firefighters. Maybe they're female firefighters and they're fire women. Firefighters? Woman? Maybe they're maybe they're fire women Uma, if they're female. Uma. Fire Uma. men, fire Uma. women. Uh, <laughs> uh, waitress waitress is uncountable? Uncountable, uncountable. One Wait waitress? Yes. Two waitresses. Uh waitress is countable. So if you say waitresses yes. and it's plural Yes. That um, will work. If it's plural, it'll work. Yeah. What sensible? Ah, uh, what sensible waitress? Sis. Yes, waitress sis. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. yes. All right. Well, that was a little bit of practice with both intonation and specifically intonation with countable and uncountable nouns using exclamations. John, is there yes. any difference between the countable and uncountable, like in the stress? No, I don't think so. I think the stress is in the same place. Okay. It's on what? the same syllables. Okay, what about the intonation? Uh, are we going to change the intonation? No, no. The only uh, difference is that you can rise and fall on either stress. That's the, uh, the diagram only shows you one type, but okay. you could rise and fall. You could put either one as the higher stress. Okay, nice. The last one, and the most important, I just want to know this, to clarify this. Okay, uh, uh, is there any difference when we are talking about a negative uh, adjective or a positive adjective like gorgeous and hideous? Will the intonation change? Well, let's try it. Let's try it. Give me a sentence and let's hear it. Like. A hideous, a hideous hat. A hideous be. hat. What a hideous hat. Right? What a hideous yeah. hat, okay? Yeah, and uh, gorgeous girl. What a gorgeous girl. It's still mm. gore and girl and hid and hat. So for me, the intonation can be the same and the stress can be the same. So, no difference. But 
you can say, what a gorgeous girl dropping. Or you can say, what a gorgeous girl rising. So you, you, can, you can switch where you're rising and where you're dropping. Okay, that can you. change. Yeah, great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, John. <laughs> See you. All right. So that was a little extra. Sorry. Go ahead. I have a question. Is I wanna is tutoring you? Is you you have time? Yes. Do you have ahead. time? Your tutoring time? Yes. Yes. Tell me. What's the question? And I wanna is tutoring. I wanna you. I wanna tutoring. Tutoring. To you? Oh, but right. Oh, write me a write me a write me a message in the chat window. Yes. You want to talk about tutoring, private tutoring. tutoring. You, you. Yes. Do you have time? Yes, yes, I do. Of course. Yes, yes, uh, I, 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 I. So is I go to tutor. I'm hearing a lot of echo in the background. It's a little hard to hear you. Uh, Grace, yes. Just send me a message in the chat in the um, message system, okay? Yes. And and we'll yes. we'll talk about it, okay? Thank you. Yes. All right. Thank you. Bye, bye for now. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.